Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple, ILOPathology.com. In continuation with the morphological classification of anemia, we will be discussing dimorphic anemia today. Right? So, in the last few sessions, we have uh, discussed about mm, normocytic, normochromic blood picture, microcytic anemias and macrocytic anemias. Right? So, in this session, we will be looking into the various causes of dimorphic anemia the mechanism of uh, dimorphic anemia and then we look into the morphology of dimorphic anemia and finally end with approach to dimorphic anemia right so this is again a repetition we all know that we have classified you know our basis based on the size of the nucleus of small lymphocyte into microcyte normocytes and macrocytes and similarly the anemia is also classified as and morphologically classified as normocytic normochromic anemia, microcytic hypochromic anemia, and macrocytic anemias or macrocytosis. So, as I told you, in today's session, we'll be discussing a different type of blood picture where you find two distinct population of red blood cells, and that is dimorphic anemia. So, as the name says, this is a type of anemia which is characterized by the presence of two distinct populations, ideally two distinct populations, but then you can have more than two populations of red blood cells with different sizes or different shapes. So, practically speaking, we will encounter, you know, um, predominantly two different sizes of populations. It's also referred to as dual population anemia. Right. So, let us look into the causes of dimorphic anemia. The most important and the most common cause of dimorphic anemia or dimorphic blood picture is combined deficiency or dual deficiency of iron and vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. Okay. So, it, it so happens that most often these deficiencies combine and that is how you find two different populations. If you have iron deficiency, you have uh, microcytic RBCs and you have vitamin b12 deficiency you have macrocytes right because the mechanism of the formation of microcytes and macrocytes are different in these two deficiencies so you have coexistence of small rbcs and large rbcs leading to a dimorphic blood picture right and second important one is you have a case of iron deficiency anemia and then you treat this patient, right? So, during the process of treatment, obviously the bone marrow will respond to the treatment and then it starts producing newer RBCs, right? Initially, the RBCs are larger in size, they are basically a polychromatophilic cells. So, that is when you find two different populations one, the native microcytic hypochromic RBCs, and two, the relatively larger population of reticulocytes are the newer RBCs. Right, so that's another cause of dimorphic blood picture that is iron deficiency anemia responding to iron therapy. Similarly, iron deficiency anemia responding to post blood transfusion immediately after post blood transfusion. You can easily see two different population of red blood cells. Right, so what is that? They can be they are usually the normocytic normochromic RBCs and microcytic RBCs in case of transfusion in microcytic anemia. If the transfusion is done in the macrocytic anemia, severe macrocytic anemia, then you can find macrocytes and normocytic RBCs, right? So that's the third cause of dimorphic anemia that is post blood transfusion to a patient with anemia. It can be sideroblastic anemia where you find a mixture of microcytic and normocytic RBCs leading to dimorphic anemia. And last but not the least, you can find dimorphic blood picture in some of the important, some of the myelodysplastic syndromes. In these cases, the uh, but the population of cells which you usually find is a mixture of normocytic, normochromic RBCs along with the macrocytes. That's why there is dimorphic blood picture. Okay, so morphologically, it's very simple. When you examine a peripheral blood smear, you find that there is no single population which is predominant. So that's where you suspect dimorphic blood picture. You find two distinct populations. For example, here you find macrocytes and microcytes. So that's an illustration showing, you know, uh, macrocytes and microcytes. That's your small lymphocyte for comparison. So that's an illustration showing normocytic as well as microcytic RBCs. Before we talk about approach to dimorphic anemia, let's let's understand a few things about RBC histogram because histogram will give you a 
clue towards dimorphic anemia even before you actually look into peripheral blood smear. See, the normal histogram is a bell shaped curve. It's called Gaussian curve. It's a symmetrical bell shaped curve which has a single peak. In this case, you have a single peak at around 90 femtoliters. Okay, normal um, MCV is you all know that it is between 80 to 100 femtoliters, right? So that's normal. If the peak is shifted towards left, then you call it as microcytic, predominantly microcytic hypercubic R basis, where the peak is way below 80 femtoliters. So that's microcytic. And then if the peak is beyond 100 femtoliters, then you call it as macrocytic. Okay. So this is your normal histogram in various types of anemias. Normal cytic, normal world book picture, it can be in microcytic anemias and macrocytic anemias. So what do you find in dimorphic blood picture? You see two different peaks. That's very important. If you see it, if you see two different peaks in an RBC histogram, then it's of then it's very obvious that you are dealing with the case of dimorphic blood picture. Then the peripheral smear examination becomes all the more simple, right? So this is a case of dimorphic blood picture in histogram. So that's the importance of knowing histogram. People often tend to neglect this histogram. It's always good to have histogram in place before you examine a peripheral blood smear. So, how do you approach? This is a very simplistic approach to dimorphic anemia based on peripheral smear examination. If you find the combination of microcytes and macrocytic RBCs, then obviously you are looking at deficiency anemia, combined deficiency anemias are treatment of iron deficiency anemia in the early stages. In the, as I told you, in the beginning of treatment, you find microcytes and the larger RBCs. Okay? If there is a combination of normocytes and macrocytes, as I told you, it's either due to treatment of megaloblastic anemia or in cases of myelodysplastic syndromes. If it is microcytes and normocytes, this is immediate post blood transfusion. You find normocytic R basis and microcytic R basis. So, what you need to understand is that your complete blood count, the CBC parameters, will not help you in diagnosing dimorphic anemia. And that's why it's very important to have a look at the peripheral smear examination. If you are having an access to RBC histogram, it's all the more good. You compare that and then examine the peripheral smear to see what's happening, what kind of population you're looking at. And that's how you make a diagnosis of dimorphic anemia. Right. That's all about today's session. It's a very short and simple session just as a sake of completion of morphological classification of anemias. Right? We looked into the causes of dimorphic anemia, the mechanism, the morphology and approach to dimorphic anemia. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you have liked this video. Do comment if you have any queries to ask. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be coming out with many more uh, simple topics in pathology for undergraduate students. And if you find this video useful, please do share. Thank you.